Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Tea Time with Tanya. Today is Wednesday, May 24th, 2023. It is 2.49 a.m., y'all. This is not going to be out by 4. Forgive me. Hopefully it will be out by 5, but it will be out in the perfect time regardless. Let's start today off with words of inspiration. Dear universe, dear creator, dear spirit guides, please give us the collective words to live by this day. Words of encouragement, words that give us hope. Huh? We, that's the same one we got before. Here we go. We are energized today. Today's word of encouragement is energized. Each and every morning, I wake up with vitality, ready to live my life to the fullest. This energy is becoming of me, and I notice how beneficial it is to my present moment. When tired, I will simply rest, then keep moving forward. Oh my goodness, I'm going to read that one one more time, y'all. I know you're not used to seeing me with glasses on, but universe is changing. God need them again. This is energized. Each and every morning, I wake up with vitality, ready to live my life to the fullest. This energy is becoming of me, and I notice how beneficial it is to my present moment. When tired, I will simply rest, then keep moving forward. Namaste, namaste, namaste. Keep it moving. Keep going. Do not stagnate. Do not allow yourself to rot. All right. Okay, y'all. Let me get this party started. We've got some outstanding questions today. First question today is about Casey DeSantis. And some of these questions, y'all, y'all got, got me almost having to look at the news to see what's going on. Okay, um, Jasmine wants to know, um, Casey DeSantis launch, uh, launches Ron's campaign with a conversation with Elon Musk. Will she be exposed for who she is? And Jasmine, this is kind of a tricky question because Casey is not the politician. Casey is the politician's wife, the hitman's bodyguard's wife, okay? Yeah, we know that she has a lot of influence, but she is still in the political scheme. She holds no actual power. But let us see. Let's ask Tarot. Will Casey DeSantis be exposed for who and what she is? First card out, we get the Nine of Swords. This is anxiety, worry, sleeplessness, um, weighing heavy on one's mind. And we got the Moon and Justice. So we have got some big yeses here. Um, so Jasmine, what I'm going to say is yes, Casey DeSantis, not just her. Casey DeSantis and another person besides her, her husband, and somebody else, they have a little fatal trio, are going to be caught up in some mess. Casey is working with somebody else. I want to say like a groomer type person, somebody who is whispering in Casey's ear what to whisper in Ron's ear. Self-serving, greedy. Money hungry, power hungry. Like I said before, she, her desire, she wants to be Flotus. She has a dream of being the first lady of the United States. 
Justice is going to come for them, though. Now, understand, Ron is not going to slither out of the political and uh, legal issues that he's gotten himself into, even though it looks like no justice will be served. Justice is slow. But I believe Casey's going to be caught up in some of that. There's a whole lot of dirt that's going to get drug up. A whole lot of crimes. A whole lot of finger pointing. Name calling. But a whole lot of outing on uh, some people doing dirty deeds. All right. There you go, Jasmine. My next question is from Dennis T. Denny wants to know. Denny says, Representative Ilhan Omar is calling for a $1,200 a month stimulus and $600 a month stimulus uh, for adults and children, respectively, to last for five years. Denny wants to know, will this happen? Will this stimulus package happen? And guys, remember, this is not the first time that you have heard of this. And the reason that you're hearing about it again is because the government is about to make it very hard for people to live without a stimulus, okay? But I'm not going to answer this. I'm going to let Tarot answer this question. So, Tarot, will Representative Ilhan Omar's plan to give a stimulus to all American citizens, adult and children, will it go forward? And I'm going to ask it this way. Will that plan or any other monetary stimulus plan be pushed forward in the near future in the United States? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Um, this is going to be, guys, but again, yes, it's going to be necessary because the uh, government is going to be s tightening the screws on us as far as food, fuel, basic economics. We are going to be living in such an inflated environment. But the answer is yes. The answer is a great big yes. Um, this is going to be discussed. Um, it's going to it's going to go forward. It will go forward. It's going to be touted as making Americans stronger, economically stronger, by giving a large boost to families and uh, people with children, because this could literally lift generations out of poverty <clears throat> a woman with a single woman with one child who is working a minimum wage job excessive hours unable to raise her child could now work normal hours and be able to maybe work a little less and spend a little bit more time raising her family or raising his family because that's more important than making some employer rich and for everybody out there saying oh it's a handout well you know what it might be but doggone it it is our tax money and how many of us how many of us lowly middle class people are sick and tired of every year we're not making $120,000, but we're paying thousands of dollars back to the IRS every year. Why can't we recoup some of our money? Why do the wealthy, why are the wealthy the only ones who benefit off of our drudgery? Ask yourself that instead of saying, oh no, nobody deserves nothing while allowing the richest to pay nothing and keep everything and expecting the poorest just to suck it up. Change your mindset. That is a slave mentality, a slave master mentality that certain people deserve to be used and abused. Just remember, if you think like that and you're on the top, 
tables turn and you could find yourself on the bottom. And we're going to be talking about that in real talk in this show. In fact, we may as well go ahead and talk about that right now. But Denny, yeah, there, there, is, a, there is a valid possibility that the government is going to give Americans some sort of stimulus check. It's going to be necessary. It's also going to be a political ploy to say, see what we're doing for the people. Understand these problems were caused by the government, by lack of oversight, by criminal elements being left in charge of the hen house. Okay, so let's not... Again, don't trust these folks. Don't trust them. All right. My next question is from Edwina S. 60 tons of explosives of explosives were stolen off of a train. Edwina wants to know what the heck happened. Part of the plot, government did it for entertainment purposes. Who is behind all of this theft? And this is a high theft. And guys, I, I did a little Google search just to see, you know, what happened. All kinds of explosive uh, thefts came up that happened in the United States. Tons and tons over the last five years of explosives have gone missing from trains, from factories, fertilizers that are made to make explosives just go missing. They get a blurb and then they're buried. Understand, there is a plot against us. CNN is now the right wing arm of the left wing media. What you see happening in broad daylight is what you see. You see them trying to steer sanity down the drain, trying to turn the people uneducated, emotionally biased people, bigoted people, racist people. They're giving them a platform to stand on. They're legitimizing their hate. They're giving them every excuse in the world to cancel this, to stop that. And everything is targeted at anything or anyone who is different, okay? 60 tons of explosives stolen off of a train. Tarot, please tell us all you can about why this is happening and what is really going on? Universe creator, spirit guides, if you have information on this, speak freely through me. Oh, okay. The first thing that is being said to me is domestic terrorism, y'all. That is the first thing. And the first card we got is the strength card and the Ace of Swords, and the Ten of Swords, and the Nine of Wands. This is all about an internal war, uh, an internal scare to... This is about keeping people nervous, keeping people off guard. But this is a real threat. These people are putting together to try to cause havoc to create chaos okay <sighs> vlad promised that he was going to take america down he promised that he was going to take america down and he got his patsy and a good chunk of the united states to turn coat and turn traitor against their own country following our 45th president. Hate, hate crimes, and intolerance is through the roof. Crimes against women, crimes against children, 
through the roof. Everybody figuring that they need to carry a gun because it's just too dangerous to walk around and be a caring, empathetic human in society. No, it, it's not love thy neighbor, it's fear thy neighbor. It's not love thy, thy neighbor, it's be able to shoot and kill him before he can shoot and kill you. This is what we're living in. This is the reality. Please wipe the cobwebs from your eyes and ask your heart, is this normal? Is this how we're supposed to be living? Are you supposed to be afraid every time you get in your vehicle that you might end up in a gunfight at a red light? Okay, so here we go. Edwina, here's the question. Here's the answer to your question. This is an inside job. This is being, this is domestic terrorism. This has been showing itself over and over and over again. This is t domestic and biological terrorism. Okay, this is people who call themselves U.S. citizens, people who call themselves patriots who are trying to internally take down our grids, causing a whole lot of train derailments, intentionally poisoning our water, because it's not just big business, no. Big business has got their hand in it. Yes, they do. Big business may be the one that employs these terrorists, but this is what it is. What you see happening, all of these horrific accidents that happen week after week, month after month, every month this year, we have had something catastrophic happen somewhere in the United States. Every single week, something is poisoned, something blows up. Something is on fire spewing toxic chemicals. And now Canada's on fire and it's moving down to us. Our fire season is going to be ridiculous because, and this one is for real guys, because of all this earth movement, because of all these hot spots around these volcanoes, we're gonna have fires literally springing up out of the ground out of nothing. Very low frequency being shot into the earth. All of this fracking, all of this wastewater being shot into active volcanoes. All of our actions have consequences. This is not to scare nobody because we're in this. And I told y'all, until 2025, this is a roller coaster ride we ain't gonna be able to get off of. So you might as well buckle in and be ready for it. What the government has prepared for us is unkind, unconscionable. Again, there are going to be shortages. We're gonna talk about the the perceived or the the the, the maybe strike of the truckers. That is a whole part of why there'll be shortages, why, they'll, why there will be empty shelves over the summer, further exacer exacerbating food insecurity for a whole bunch of kids. And then they got you focused on the border. Oh, but Ron DeSantis don't, he wants to kick everybody out of the state who is willing to work in those fields to pick fruits to pick the vegetables that we depend on. Ron DeSantis wants to kick them right out of Florida. Ah, wants to see how many Americans he can get to put in them fields. No, watch what happens because there's a plan to this. When you don't have people to pick them crops, you need your farmers. I don't care who you are, you need your farmers. But here's your plan. This is the plan. You need labor that you don't have to pay. 
that you don't have oversight of. Because if you bring migrants in, there's rules about what and how you're supposed to treat migrants. But there aren't rules on how you treat inmates. Okay? And what type of labor you can force an inmate into. I told y'all, this housing crisis is a way, this is a way to, to take people out of their free status and put them in bondage. That is why slavery is still written in our constitution and it is now legal. It's legal to own slaves in certain American states. This is on purpose. Understand where these states are, how much agriculture these states produce. Okay, you're going to get rid of the people who, who come to this country in search of those types of jobs to just sustain themselves. People who work harder than any American has in the last freaking 50 years. Unless you were one of them people who are out there in them fields from sun up to sundown with your back bent over picking this, that, and the other thing. Because if you were sitting in the air conditioned anything, if you sat down, then you're in the privileged class. Because these folks don't sit, they work from sun up to sundown in the most inhumane conditions. But doggone it, you get your avocado toast. You get your doggone lemon for the tea. You don't worry about how it got there, just that it's there. And now, Ron DeSantis is threatening to make sure that you don't have your avocado toast. That your Cobb salad it remains in the field. If, it, if, it, if it's reliant on voluntary work from Americans. But understand what this is all about. This is a culture that they are creating to enslave a whole bunch of people. This is state-sponsored terrorism. This stuff going missing with all of the stuff that's been happening around the railroad companies, 60 tons of explosives. This is a lot of material. Aren't the railroads supposed to have some type of security? If you're transporting highly hazardous material, aren't you supposed to have some type of fail safe on it? Or can any boo-boo the fool just walk up and just uh, get a front loader and just, you know, pick up a rail car and drive away with it? Or however they stole this material. Okay, we asked the wrong questions. But Edwina, what happened? We need to be, we need to be aware of this. We need to be aware that this, what was stolen could very well be used against us. Very funny how people get shot, you know, for doing something stupid at McDonald's. Cops are right there, can hold somebody down and execute them right there. 60 tons of an explosive material goes missing and everybody's just scratching their head like, hmm, wonder how that happened. Eyes wide open. This stuff is facilitated. All of this stuff is not happening in a vacuum. It is happening right in front of our eyes. Open your eyes. See it for what it is. See them for who they are. And understand, <coughs> we're collateral damage. My next question is from Shay Shay. Okay, how can we tell? This is a good question. This is a spiritual question. How can we tell what is our voice, what is our higher consciousness, and what is just our thoughts? And if you're going through an awakening, this can be very confusing. 
but I want you to understand when your highest self is talking to you, everything that it is telling you to do is for your own good. Your highest self does not sabotage you. Your highest self does not deal in the ego. Your highest self is not worried about what shoes to wear with that outfit. Your highest self is not worried about should you wear the short curly wig or the long straight one. That's ego. That is your own thoughts. Your highest self is that voice inside of you that says, that's pushing you, urging you to create something, to say something that you might not normally, that you might normally be afraid to say, to address something that you feel heartfelt. It, it, your, your highest self urges you to be who it is you came here to be without the trappings. And by trappings, I mean without the clothing with the Nike logo or the Gucci or Prada, okay? The most authentic you, you butt naked, with nothing but who you are showing and you being confident and sure in yourself, in your nakedness, knowing that even though you are unclothed, you are completely protected, okay? That is your highest consciousness. It's not worried about what you're wearing. It's not worried about what you're driving or what you're living in. Your highest self is worried about what you're creating, what thought forms are guiding you daily, what you believe about yourself. That's what your highest self is involved with. Shay Shay has a second question and she asks, how do we balance our chakras? Well, the first thing, and I'm going to bring out a visual aid for this one. First thing to know is what are your chakras? Okay. Every one of us has chakras and getting them in alignment and in balance is one of the most important things that we can do to help ourselves grow, okay? So I'm gonna read this to you. And I have this, this is my little chakra wheel. So I'm gonna read this to you just to give you an overview of what your chakras are. I'm not gonna read this whole thing. I'm just gonna read what your chakras are, okay? Chakra means wheel of energy. The seven major chakras are doorways for life force energy called prana or chi. Chakras are consciousness centers that transform energy and interface between the dense physical world of the five senses and the subtle world of pure consciousness. The lotus petal, okay, and that's this flower behind me. That is the lotus flower. The lotus petals indicate the frequency, vibration rate, and color of energy fields. So in the chakras, they are the color of the rainbow. So if you can remember the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Bibb, starting from the bottom, moving to the top, your chakras, in order are red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. Okay? All right. So there's your little lesson for today. And if you have more questions on chakras, I will be glad to tell you. So 
answering your question, Shay Shay, how do we balance our chakras? <clears throat> it is not hard, even though we make it so difficult. Balancing our chakras is aligning ourselves. It is releasing ourselves from internal blockages, anger, fear, self-doubt, jealousy, rage. Those are blockages that block our chakras, that stop our energy from flowing. Our energy flows just like our lungs breathe in a circular motion. Inhale and exhale. It is, it is in and out, but there is an energy field that surrounds us when we are breathing, okay? From the top to the bottom, inward and outward, upward and around, we're contained in this energy cocoon, which is centralized by our chakra centers. Each one, each different color has different meanings. And it's too much to go into that in one breath. But if you are interested in learning about chakras, which what each one does, tell me that in the comment section. Tell me that I need to address this and I will spend an episode talking about the metaphysical and the physical and how we merge these energies together so that we can live our fullest, best life. All right? All right. I hope that wasn't too brief for you, Shay Shay. Shay Shay's next question is, what is the Galactic Federation? Excellent questions. You've been watching some videos. All right? There, there is the Galactic, there's a couple of federations, I can't name them all, but the Galactic Federation, the Federation of uh, Planets, um, there's a couple of organizations of alien life forms, ETs, whatever you want to call them, interplanetary councils that govern planets, that govern interactions between certain species of well let's call them aliens because that's the ignorant term that we call extraterrestrial beings just like we call ourselves humans they call themselves what they are as well and each one has a name for themselves we call them what we want to call them now the pleiadians um uh and a couple of those other ones that have been on this planet and made themselves known, those are the ones who are over primarily the uh, Galactic Federation here on this planet, okay? Like I said, there are other federations in the galaxy. The Galactic Federation is the Federation of ETs with the Pleiadians that is working with the world government, the Russian government, the Chinese government, with governments, okay? ETs exist. They are organized. We have been lied to. They have been trying to keep this secret for eons when people all over the place have seen massive, Massive proof that we are not alone in this planet, on this planet, in this sphere, in these spheres, because there are levels to this madness. And like I said, the first thing that we have to admit is that we don't know nothing about our own planet because we have been lied to and kept in the dark. All right? Just, just remember that, okay? My next question is from Michelle. Michelle wants to know, 
what's going on with the student loan forgiveness. And I had read on this before saying, don't worry about it. It will come back around. But again, our justice system is running slowly um, because we got a whole bunch of insurrectionists that are running our country that are stopping sane programs from going forward. We've got a corrupt and dirty Supreme Court that is facilitating anti-human laws to be passed. So here we go. Uh, Michelle, what's going on with student loan forgiveness? Taro, please tell us whatever you can about student loan forgiveness. First card out, we got the eight of wands. Um, guys, again, be patient. If you, I know if you are a person who is looking, counting on these loans to be forgiven, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. But you, if you need to get in on as many class action lawsuits as you possibly can to sue these people who are stopping you from getting what the president signed into law because they just don't want you to have it. <sighs> They're stealing your money. They're, they're, they're getting interest off of this. This is a plan to keep people impoverished, but this is a theft of the student loan money. Under these, these big old companies, Freddie Mac, Sally Mae, Sally Faye, whoever, they all the same company. They are all nothing more than freaking loan sharks for entertainment purposes only. High, high interest with a purpose so that you will never be out of debt. And then the Republicans attached your social security to it. Okay, understand what these criminals did because this is why so many people are afraid right now. They're going to their 60s and 70s, trying their hardest to pay off student debt from 30, 40 years ago, unable to beat the doggone interest, knowing that their social security is attached to it because if you default on your student loans somehow that means well the government ain't going to give you nothing to live on even though you have paid into social security your whole life that money that you paid into just goes because you couldn't pay the interest on inflated student debt that was that is a trap Okay, understand what this is. All right, so um, Michelle, there are, if there are class action lawsuits that are out there, get in on them. At some point, this is going to pass. The student loan forgiveness is going to pass, but it is not going to pass until it has hurt the majority of people, until the Republicans have drug their feet to intentionally cause harm to people, forcing people to default on those loans before the before the forgiveness goes in. They're working hand in hand with these loan sharks. Understand what's going on. They're dragging their feet so that they can make these loan companies so much more money because you get, once you default, you know, before that comes, even though the, the government is saying it's going to pay off your debt, if they can get you in default, then they can get the government to cut them a bigger check. It's all a scam. It's all a game. Understand, these people are scratching each other's back, washing each other's dirty behinds. This is so much underhandedness. These are politicians who are in bed with these loan companies trying to keep people enslaved in debt. Oh yeah, that, it's going to pass once they get enough people defaulted so that they can get big cuts of money from the United States government. Free money that they themselves won't pay a penny in taxes on. All right. My next question <clears throat> is from Preston. Let me have a drink of my co my my tea. I almost said coffee. I don't drink coffee. I don't even know what it is. That is peach ginger. Mm. 
peach ginger. That is peach ginger tea. Might be peach ginger turmeric. Think it is. Kind of nice. Still a little hot though. My next question is from Preston. Preston says, most of the country knows that Lindsey Graham is gay. How and why are other gay GOP, quote unquote, George Santos, and a couple others that we know about, how can they advance and justify taking the rights away from the LGBTQ that takes their own rights away? I don't even need the cards for this one because this is what they are paid to do. These people don't believe in what they're voting for. They are paid. Everything you see these people doing that just don't make no sense, that goes against everything that is human, they are doing because somebody is cutting them a check. Somebody is flying them to an island. Somebody is making sure that their down payment on their yacht is made. Okay, understand, these people don't believe the garbage they're pushing. These people are bought and paid for. They are a part of the freaking machine. Greed, avarice, self-serving, they don't care. Because guess what? The rules don't apply to the rich, so it doesn't make any difference what laws they pass against us. Those rules are for us, not for them. And, and there's your answer, Preston. The rules are for us. They, they don't want us to have life liberty or to be able to pursue happiness. Because if you pay attention, that's what they're going after with everything they do is to, that's the one thing we were supposed to be insured of is life liberty and the pursuit of happiness. <clears throat> that is exactly what they're trying to take from us. We're in a culture now to where we have to have safe spaces because people are so doggone mean, evil, and they relish, revel in it. They're mean because they can be. Being a psychopath is trendy. How many people can you abuse? You, Mr. CEO. Oh, you mismanaged your money. So you're going to fire your whole company with an email knowing that that's going to put X amount of people directly onto the street, but you're too big of a coward to say, you know what, I messed up and this is what happened. No, you can't even tell them. Can't even hear your voice. No, you say it with an impersonal, impersonal email showing just how big of a turd these people really are. Okay, so... Preston, I hope you got your answer in that. These people are showing exactly how big a turds they are. They're not voting against their interests because their interests and our interests never collide. They live in a world we could only dream of. Consequences is not even a surety. But what is sure is that they will take from us to give to themselves. All right. All right. My next question is from Cruising PC. Cruising PC wants to know how long is America going to support these arcane abortion laws? Cruising PC again. 
Like I said, until we stand up and decide to fight these muckety mucks, we're going to be ruled by our subordinates. We are going to be ruled by our inferiors. We are already being ruled by our inferiors. And we are allowing these inferiors to change the laws, change state laws, giving themselves power to override the voice of the people. Because why? Because they're taking away our rights. Because when we elect unscrupulous people, they do unscrupulous things. And then they make laws so that we can't even hold them accountable for what they've done. So, how long will America support these arcane laws? Until we stand up and decide that no, we said no. This is not going to be signed into law behind some closed door with some special lobbyist group taking a photo op behind us. Bob Marley said it. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. But we got to be in it. And it's coming. It's inevitable. And you will be tasked with a choice where you are, what you are willing to stand for, fight for, and die for. It is coming. Change your mindset. Prepare yourself spiritually. These rich folks are going to try to pull a rabbit out of their hat. Okay? And it's not going to be for our entertainment. It is going to be for our demise. Understand, we are being ruled. Our Congress is being run by insurrectionists. By traitors who are working directly for the Kremlin to bring down our country. We have an FBI and a CIA that are allowing this to happen. We got a criminal running for president, two criminals running for president who should be under the jail with the amount of evidence that is against them. This is baked into the plan. See the forest, see the trees. Don't get distracted, all right? So, cruising PC, we're going to be in this until we decide not to be in this. Because it is up to us. How much are we going to take? How much are we going to give away? How many of y'all started reading them user agreements? whole bunch of them came up recently, didn't they? Did you read it all the way through? Or did they win and you got tired and you just said, screw it? Okay, I click accept. Because you can't think of leaving not using that app or that platform. So you give them license to listen to your conversations. To record you. With and without your knowledge. To sell your image to third, fourth, and fifth party companies. Your personal data, location, identifiers. Y'all better read. Read them agreements you're signing. You might be surprised at all this stuff that you don't have a right to. That is you. Content that you don't even own. All right? Know what you're dealing with and know who you're dealing with. Next question is, what language will survive as the international, as English has been the international language uh, for so many years. Will the U.S. teach foreign languages earlier in school? As things are now, English is the, um, the Queen's English, not American English. So let's, let's get that clear, first of all, because Americans don't speak English. We speak American. We speak a conglomeration of a whole bunch of languages smushed together into one. 
we do not speak English. People in England speak English, okay? Lesson for today, lesson number one, we speak American. English is the national language because most foreign schools teach that as the first, second language that they, uh, that they learn. That is why Europeans, most of Europeans are so much smarter than American children. And I'm not saying this to slight American children. European children that are French, Spanish, Portuguese, whatever, are bilingual, multilingual. Africans, most Africans that live in Africa speak five or more languages and dialects, including French and Spanish and uh, German. Okay? Americans have been kept ignorant. If you wanted to learn a language, it was an elective. You were never forced to learn another language. And then we're the only ones who get belligerent and tell people who, indigenous people to this continent to speak English when we ourselves don't speak English. But we demand that other people speak English because we're too ignorant to learn another language, to understand another dialect. And instead of learning, we get offended and automatically think, well, they're speaking another language, so they must be talking about me. Get out of your own way, Karen. Not everything's about you, all right? Allow people to be people. So, um, I think this is Cruz and PC's question too. Will English still be the default language for uh, international trade yes or no we got death inverted and the devil you know what there is going to be a change let me get this death inverted reads inertia sleep lethargy lethargy and petrification so people are afraid that English is going to be not the primary language. But I can't tell you what is going to be the primary language. But if this is cruising PC, yeah, there may be a change in the international accepted language of business. It may not uh, be English. I can't tell you what language it may go to but it may change from English to another dialect. Okay, there you go. Um, second part of this question, will the U.S. teach foreign languages earlier in school? And I have, I'm getting this huge no, because this is part of the keeping Americans ignorant. And if you don't see it, please open your eyes. We have been intentionally dumbed down. Just look around. We got kids that can't write cursive, can't read cursive, think it's a whole different language. Kids that can't tell time on a clock with hands. Kids that have never existed in a world without technology who freak out when the internet goes down or the lights go out because they have no coping skills on how to exist when, without being entertained, continuously stimulated, continuously, electronically entertained. We are on top of a powder cave. And I need to say this, uh, again, I know my shows can be scary. That is not my intent. But doggone it, we kind of live in some scary times right now. And when birds are singing at midnight, when songbirds are singing at midnight, that is the universe screaming, pay attention. Songbirds don't sing in the dark. They, they signify the sun coming up. They also signify omens of change. If you're hearing birds singing all night long, 
Pay attention. That is an omen. Prepare for changes. Prepare for the unexpected. Have that mindset. That is what you need above all. It's not about how much stuff you can acquire. It is about your mindset. Surviving this is about your mental acuity, about you not holding on to garbage, about you not believing what is false, but about you navigating, feeling your way through this, using all of your faculties that were given to you by the most divine. This is a spiritual war that we have to get through. The physical aspects of it will be manageable, but you got to get your spirit right. That is what this is about. And these are the choices that are going to have to be made. Okay. I know it was talking about teaching foreign languages earlier in school, and I went off on a tangent and started preaching. <sighs> so, yes or no? Will the U.S. teach foreign languages earlier in school? No. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, again, it's going to still be, you're going to have all these people fighting against it. We're American. We need to speak our own language. People need to adapt to us, not the other way around. That's the mindset. It's going to be left as an elective. Young children are not going to be introduced. You know how you know how most kids are learning an, another language in this country if they don't have bilingual parents. Sesame Street, still, Dora the Explorer. The the there's a a, a one on. Uh, I know my granddaughters when they were little were learning Mandarin from shows that were on Nickelodeon. Yeah. Unfortunately, the way that our children are learning foreign languages is through programming from the television, not from school, not from a government that wants to see our children succeed internationally. Our children graduate from high school at a deficit. At a deficit. Children in Europe graduate high school and already have a degree, a two-year degree when they finish their, their secondary or their, um, their general education. They've already got a two-year college degree because it's part of their, their education because they value the intelligence of their people knowing that a dumb society cannot it cannot stand, it will not go into the future. And that's what we as Americans have got to understand. If we keep allowing them to dumb us down, eventually we won't exist. And that's real talk. All right. My next question is from Spirits Beyond the Stars. Was Bill Gates being blackmailed by Jeffrey Epstein? Was Bill Gates being blackmailed by Jeffrey Epstein for doing nasty stuff with people he wasn't married to or shouldn't have been having nothing to do with? Was Bill Gates being blackmailed by Jeffrey Epstein? Yes or no? Yes. 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 And um, you know what? Here, Here's your yes. At least three women, at least three girls, oh, Bill Gates was with. And Bill Gates wanted Jeffrey Epstein unalived. Yes, there was a whole blackmailing scheme there. And then when, when certain folks got the upper hand, they was like, oh, we could deal with you if we want to. I still don't. I still don't believe that Epstein is dead, but he can never resurface any way, shape, or form as he was. So if he's alive, he's only existing. He's not living because he can never be who he was. He can't be billionaire playboy anymore ever again. 
He's got to change his face. He's got to change everything about him. And he can't draw any attention to himself. So just, just remember, even if he is still alive, he is living in existence to where even if he ain't in prison, he's in prison. Okay? Because he's always worried somebody's going to recognize him. Or worse, somebody's going to actually take him out. All right? All right. There you go. The answer is yes for that one. My next question is from Marshall D. What will happen to undocumented workers in Florida? Will companies that hire them tell on them? And this is a great question, Marshall. Okay, number one, understand this. Undocumented workers that are working in Florida have been hired by these companies who know that these people are undocumented. How do they know? Because we have fast ID. We have the whole centralized program to make sure that all workers in the United States are, a, are eligible workers in the United States. So if there are undocumented workers working for companies, that means that those companies went around the federal government and hired, knowingly hired, undocumented workers. This is where everybody's got to get off their high horse. These people did not come over here and hire themselves into these com companies. Okay? These companies went in search of these people. These these people are getting paid less than union workers. These people are working ridiculous hours that are not union sponsored. They make sure there's no union work. Unions are busted up so that these undocumented people's children as young as 13 years old can be working in slaughterhouses in conditions that aren't suitable, aren't suitable for hazmat certified grown men. But a 13-year-old kid who could lose an arm, a leg, or their whole life, it's perfectly fine for them to work there. First thing we got to do is know who your enemy is and understand that our enemy has been got, has has Stockholm syndromed us to death. Got us protecting them at every turn. This is why Donald is so popular because he's got the poorest Americans carrying him on their shoulders like he is the pharaoh himself while he craps down their necks shows them every day he does not care about their well-being. But he says he does. And he's always pointing the finger at somebody else, the true narcissist. It's his fault. It's Mexico's fault. It's Hunter Biden's fault. But it's never his fault. Okay? When you idol worship man, you get exactly what you're worshiping, a man. So the, will the companies tell on them? No. The companies hired them. All right? The companies are the ones that are hiring the the workers the the workers are going there because these companies are hiring them because these farms are hiring them if there were if they were following the law the the undocumented people would not be in the area because there would be no work for them okay so let's not point the finger at the people who are just trying to work let's point the finger at the big corporations who are breaking the law and then t getting everybody mad at the poor people who are just trying to feed themselves and their family. Remember, they didn't hire themselves to the company. The company hired them. And in a whole lot of instances, them same companies will send buses to pick up these undocumented employer employees. All right, let's point the finger where it needs to be pointed. My next question is from Edwina S. 
Will there be a trucking boycott in Florida or all over the United States? Will there be a work stoppage because of these arcane laws and rules that are being passed in Florida? Here you go. This is what y'all wanted to know. Will there be a trucking boycott or work stoppage that is going to affect supply and trade? First card out is the Seven of Pentacles. Yes. Okay. It's coming. Yes. Yes. Here we go. This is, we're, this is inevitable. We're, we're not going to be able to get away from this one. It's going to be a strike. They're gonna be a, it's going to be a strike. It may not be a long-lived strike, but it's going to be a strike that is going to be enough to cause a whole lot of people to take a whole lot of notice. Again, don't hoard. It's gonna, it's not going to be necessary to hoard. Because the things that you're going to want to hoard, they're not going to be, they're going to be available. And the, you know. Expect them to play with your gas prices. Again. That's one of the first things that's going to go up. They're going to hurt you with gas prices okay and then there's going to be just the unavailability and and i say the gas prices guys because if it's if it's not going through the pipeline then it's getting moved around on trucks and gas doesn't get delivered unless it's in a truck somewhere so gas prices are going to go up prepare for that but guys this is going to be one that's going to seriously affect a whole lot of people there may come a day where we need to actually do a whole national just boycott everything. Stay at home for a whole week. Don't buy nothing. Don't go nowhere for us to take our country back. For us to let the wealthiest of them know that we still have control. If nobody goes to work for five days, how many companies would just have to shut down? But we got too many people who can't survive without DoorDash or Postmates, who, who, who can't boil water, can't go shopping. But one week of us refusing to play their game would give us our power back. Could grind this country to a screeching halt and we could come to the bargaining table with power. But we have so many people who are too afraid too afraid to just be still, too afraid to exact themselves from this slave matrix. Oh my God, I might lose my job. I might get fired. But you could walk in tomorrow and they could just look at your face and say, okay, we have to let 12 people go. Sorry, you're one of the 12. Just like that, no matter how lot hard you've worked, not no matter how much dedication you've given, you are just an employee to your company. If you died tomorrow, they would have you replaced by next Friday. Just remember that. Remember who you're working for. These people don't love you. You know, if you want love, you start your own company. Don't expect no corporation to love you, respect you, or even regard you. You are there to make them money and they are there to pay you as little as possible for the pleasure real eyes guys real eyes all right my next question from edwina will the actual history of enslavement ever be told this is what uh desantis is trying so hard to erase and we need to know the real story of um, enslavement in this country. We need to understand that so many of us who have done 23 and Me that it says that we're from everywhere in Africa, but we can't find one grandfather, great grandfather in common with anybody else. A lot if your if your ancestry is like that, I want to tell you, you're an indigenous American. Yeah, you have, you have Pan-Africa in your DNA because you are a person of color. 
But if you can't find any relatives, if you can't go back three generations, you don't know who your great grand. And this is for people who are in their in their fifties and older. If you and black, you can't go back three generations and name your grandparents from your twenty three and me. If nobody shows up as you being related to them in Africa, that means you are an indigenous American. Your DNA is from this continent. Your tribe was one of them that was wiped out and enslaved. All right? This is what they're trying to keep from us. Read. Read everything you can. Listen to the authorities that know, who are not afraid to tell you the truth about what this country has done to us, how we have been brainwashed and lied to and forcibly forced into this false memory of what's happened. And they're trying to change it even further to tell people that, oh, enslaved people love being slaves. When they got freed, it was the worst thing that could have happened to them. That is what they are putting in school books. Putting price tags on little children as they have them take pictures, picking cotton, saying, see, this wasn't bad. They had fun in the field. See how much black people were worth? You were worth thousands of dollars because they sold you like you were a cow. Like somebody was raising you in the 4-H club. Understand, know your history. And if you don't know it, learn it. And then teach it to your children. Ignorance and apathy is unacceptable. We as a people got to know who we are. You got to know your power. You got to know why they don't want you to know who you are. There's power in this. Reach out and grab it. It's time. My last question is from Spirits Beyond the Stars. Are rents being raised to cause more homelessness? Absolutely. Because you need, you're going to need people in them fields. So you have homeless people. And I'm going to keep saying this. Because you, you, you see it. California is homeless. Can't afford rent. But these people are working. Living in tents on sidewalks. That smell of urine. And feces. That are, that are raising children. On the sidewalks. Of the biggest city. One of the biggest cities. In the United States. And then all of a sudden, the city says, oh, this is an eyesore, and we've got to clean this up. And they send dump trucks and, and garbage trucks and take what's left of these people's dignity and throw it in the trash. Everything that's left, forcing these people to have to start over time and time and time again when there are thousands of empty buildings that could be refurbished repurposed and used to house people. Buildings sit empty, boarded up, while people languish on sidewalks. This is our country. And then they make laws to make slavery legal again. And tell the, tell the people, the only people who are willing to come and work in these fields, tell them, no, you, we don't want you here. You can't work our fields. We're going to let our crops rot instead of letting you come and make a living for your family. Homelessness is created. So are man-made prisons. So are for-profit prisons. What you're seeing is American returning to its slave roots. And I'm gonna say it the way it is because this is what's going on right in front of your face. They're creating a whole class of impoverished people with no place to go and a whole bunch of farms that need people. Do the math. All right, y'all. I ain't going to end all mad and hostile. But this is our country. And we must know our history above all. Okay, this ain't going to even get out by five. So I apologize. But if you're here for it, 
you here for it. And you here for it for whatever time it makes it out there. I love you. Thank you so much for rocking with me. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Please give me a thumbs up for the algorithm. Leave a comment. If you have a question or a concern, anything, leave a comment below this video. And guys, if you would like a private reading with me, $35. I do readings uh, Monday through Saturday, 4 a.m. to 5 p.m. I got you covered no matter where you're at. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with that. Stay strong. Know that you were put here for a reason. And it is time for us to understand what that reason is and to put it to use. I love you. I love you. Rise up. Find your voice. Namaste, y'all. Weather's going to be crazy. I'm going to just leave it like that. Whether everything's going to just be on tilt, be prepared. I love you. Namaste.